In this video, I'm going to list my top 10 Force users that we see in the Star Wars films. Of course, characters who never made significant appearances like Darth Plagueis won't be included in this, and I won't be including Snoke in this video, as we only got a very small sample of his power, and we don't really know how much of that was him, and how much of it was Palpatine. But now, without further ado, let's get into it. To start the list out at number 10, we have Maul. He was trained in the ways of the Sith by Darth Sidious from a young age. In The Phantom Menace, we don't see him performing a ton of telekinetic moves, but this does not mean he is not using the Force. Maul actually preferred to get up close and personal with his victims, which is why we often see him engage in lightsaber combat rather than using less physical Force abilities, like Force Choke and Force Lightning. But this doesn't mean he wasn't capable of such power. In fact, we do get to see him using more of this power in The Clone Wars and in Star Wars Rebels. The Force goes much deeper than what we as viewers can see, and Maul is a prime example of this. Force users all channel a great deal of Force energy when in any sort of combat, including hand-to-hand -hand lightsaber duels. Okay, next up is Count Dooku. Dooku destroys Obi-Wan both times they meet, cuts off Anakin's hands, and escapes an attack from his former master in Yoda. Palpatine states that Dooku was significantly more powerful than Maul, and this is made pretty clear in the results when they both fight Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's also trained by both Yoda and Palpatine, which is pretty much as good as it can possibly get. At number 8, I have Obi-Wan Kenobi. I really struggled with this one because I feel like Obi-Wan should be a lot higher, but looking at everyone I placed above him, I think this is about where he belongs. Obi-Wan was a master of the defensive Form 3 fighting style. Kenobi's use of this technique is what allowed him to defeat formidable opponents such as General Grievous and his apprentice Anakin Skywalker, who took on more aggressive approaches. Obi-Wan's knowledge of the Force is not to be overlooked either, as he was responsible for the training of Anakin and Luke Skywalker, two of the most powerful and skilled Jedi the galaxy has ever seen. The General was also one of the few Jedi to survive Order 66, and only the third Jedi ever to discover the path to immortality. He did lose to Dooku during what was probably his physical prime, but Obi-Wan still had a lot to learn when it came to his knowledge of the Force. He had years ahead of him training with Yoda, which we're probably going to get to see a lot of in the new Kenobi TV series. This next one may be controversial for some, but for me, it isn't. In fact, I would have liked to place Rey even higher on the list, but her lack of training and her immaturity in controlling her emotions at times keeps her at number 7 for now. Emotions aside, how can you deny a woman who literally performs mind tricks and lightsaber pulls with absolutely no training whatsoever? Then, after she's spent about a year of training with Leia, she's doing all sorts of crazy things. Healing creatures and people with the Force, using Force lightning on accident, freezing lightsaber attacks, redirecting blaster bolts back at her opponents, and don't even get me started on the dyad she shares with Kylo Ren. I'm actually not even going to include the strength of the dyad in this ranking, Otherwise, Rey and Kylo, or Raylo, or whatever you want to call them, would be much higher. But seriously, I don't see how anyone can not acknowledge her power. I understand that some people don't like that she was so strong without any training, but guys, she's a Palpatine. And even if she wasn't, power is power, regardless of how it comes, and Rey wields a great deal of it. Now to round out the bottom half of the list, we have Mace Windu. Mace Windu was second in command on the Jedi Council under Master Yoda, and the only person to ever defeat Darth Sidious in a lightsaber duel. He mastered the Form 7 fighting style known as Vapad, which allowed him to channel the dark side of the Force back onto his enemies. This was extremely difficult as he had to be conscious enough to not use the dark side himself, but rather only allow it to expose weaknesses in his opponents. Mace's connection with the Force also granted him the foresight to nearly foil Palpatine's plan before it was put into action. The grandson of Anakin Skywalker, born to Leia and Han, Ben was trained in the ways of the Force for 13 years by Luke Skywalker, before turning to the dark side and spending seven more years under the guidance of Snoke, which is essentially like being trained by Palpatine based on what we know from Episode 9. He could read people's minds, freeze blaster and lightsaber attacks, and pulled the greatest Jedi mind trick of all time on Supreme Leader Snoke. And let's not overlook that he is also the only person we have ever seen with the ability to save people from death, as he literally brings Rey back to life. That alone might honestly be enough to push him even higher on this list, but we'll leave him at 5 for now and see what future movies or TV shows or even books bring to the table. But I think it's pretty safe to expect that both him and Rey will climb this list as time goes on. Anakin or Darth Vader has training in the light and dark sides of the Force under a couple of the most powerful Force users ever. Anakin defeats and kills Count Dooku in a lightsaber duel and is considered to be the best pilot in the galaxy at his peak. Upon his turn to the dark side, Anakin begins to unlock his full potential. He's finally allowed to unleash all his hate and anger on his opponents. He fights with a new ferocity and uncontrollable ruthlessness that is usually too much for his victims to handle. But his ascension is cut short when he is defeated and left to burn on Mustafar at the hands of his old master. 
Both as Anakin and as Vader, he is considered one of the best lightsaber duelists who ever lived. Vader's mental power and focus remains above Anakin's, but his physical limitations prevent him from ever touching his full potential. His overconfidence led to his defeat by Obi-Wan, and that flaw haunted him for the rest of his life. Okay, now at number three, I have Luke Skywalker. I feel like maybe I could have put him at number two, but three just feels right for now. Luke Skywalker was trained by both Obi-Wan and Master Yoda. He turned his father Vader back to the light which brought balance to the Force, started a new generation of Jedi, and once Force projected himself across the galaxy. We have also recently gotten a hint that Snoke's wounds may have been the result of a past duel with Luke. So if that's true, we can only imagine the kind of power Luke must have gained in between episodes 6 and 7, based on the little taste of Snoke's ridiculous power we got in episode 8. In 2015, George Lucas himself went as far as to say that Luke was the most powerful Force user in Star Wars. But that of course was likely based on Legends material, and I want to keep this ranking strictly canon. Let's also not forget that in episode 6, Luke defeated Darth Vader in a lightsaber duel. Then after Return of the Jedi, he spent over 20 years leading up to The Force Awakens, scouring the galaxy for Jedi relics. His understanding of the Force was among the most educated and wise Jedi ever. As the Grand Master of the Jedi Order when they were at their absolute peak, Master Yoda led the Jedi Council with a level of wisdom and experience that no other Jedi could ever even dream of. He spent 800 years training Jedi, including the training of the only other Grand Master we have ever seen in Luke Skywalker. Yoda is able to absorb Force Lightning and fire it back at his opponents. He is recognized as the best swordsman in the Jedi Order, and his knowledge of the Force is unrivaled. Before Sidious and Yoda were sent flying in their duel in Revenge of the Sith, the novel actually tells us that Yoda had gained control for a moment, and that Sidious felt himself losing. He is also the first Jedi to unlock the path to full immortality. Qui-Gon did discover part of it, but he was only able to speak to the living, unable to show himself. And now at number one, as I'm sure most of you could have guessed at this point, we have Darth Sidious, or Emperor Palpatine. A master of all seven forms of lightsaber combat, Darth Sidious destroyed his opponents. He eventually outlasts Master Yoda, dominates Maul, and kills Maul's apprentice, Savage Opress, with ease. He is the one behind all the evil we see in this nine-film saga. Responsible for the training and or creation of Maul, Dooku, Darth Vader, Snoke, and Kylo Ren, he concealed himself from the Jedi while working right under their noses, and was the mastermind behind wiping out the entire Jedi Order. He then somehow survived being thrown down the ventilation shaft of the Death Star, and can only be defeated when the power of all the Jedi who ever lived join Rey in battle. I do question why he isn't ever smart enough to stop using Force Lightning when it's being reflected back onto him, but that's essentially his only flaw. His power and resilience is actually so great that many still question whether he is really gone forever after being blown to bits at the end of The Rise of Skywalker. So obviously this ranking is just based on my opinion and what I see in these nine films. It's by no means the end-all be-all, and I'm sure lots of people have very different lists than what I presented here. Let me know what you guys thought about this list and about this style of video in the comments section below. I hope you all have a great day, and may the Force be with you always.